Jesus Christ, you are the light of the world. Stay with us now, for it is evening. Let your light scatter the darkness.
prayers come before you, O God, as incense. And may your presence surround and fill us so that in union with all creation, we might sing of your praise and your love in our lives. Amen. Amen. So the text for this evening is a reading from the Gospel of St. John. The little book I'm going to share with is one I've used before. It's the best of Svi Kalisher. And I'll read a little. Anybody know Svi other than a couple of us? I'll read a little, just a few words of his bio uh, before I read this. It's on the in, his piece is on the Incarnation. And uh, that's why I'm reading John, the first part of John. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. And the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through Him. And without Him, not one thing came into being. What has come into being in Him was light. And the light was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness. And the darkness has not overcome it. And the Word became flesh and lived among us. And we have seen His glory, the glory as of a Father's only Son, full of grace and truth. John testified of him and cried out, This was he whom I said, He who comes after me ranks ahead of me, because he was before me. From his fullness we have all received grace upon grace. The law indeed was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God. It is God the only Son who is close to the Father's heart, who has made him known. The Gospel of the Lord. I want to read just a couple little paragraphs about the Early in 1948, a teenager Jewish, uh, teenager Jewish war waif from Poland disembarked from a ship in Haifa, Israel. He had weathered and gone through the worst of the Holocaust. A ravaged country, a lost childhood, and the death of his family. He had seen the ugliness of war in ways few have ever experienced. Little did he know, however, that what awaited him in his new home, Israel, would bring additional battle scars as he and his people struggled for survival. But the physical pain and deprivation he had endured were only a bleak covering for what was going on inside his tortured soul. Zvi desperately needed a friend, and as chronicled in the biography of his life, Zvi, he found more than a friend when he received a new life in the Messiah, Jesus. What has transpired over the ensuing 50 years is the history of a man who no longer wears Israeli army fatigues, but moves through the streets of Jerusalem in another uniform, the full armor of God. For five decades, Stories of his spiritual encounters have encircled enriched lives and encouraged countless thousands of believers the world over. And now through his editor and uh, some people who came together, they put this book of some of his memoirs together. And this one is titled, How Can God Have a Birthday? In the days preceding Christmas, many people in Israel asked believers, how can God have a birthday? The concept of birth, the birth of Jesus is very hard for the Jewish people to accept. I am always asked during the Christmas season, why do you want the Jews to be partners in your fantasy and dance around the golden calf with the Christians? Unfortunately, they never give me an opportunity to reply. I recently only... Uh, I receive only attacks because in their eyes I am guilty of a great deception. I recently said to a group of such people, if you have any more questions, ask them now. And when you are finished, I will answer you. But the answer may surprise you. Then they fired off a series of questions. Why are you so happy at this time of the day, of the year, excuse me? Why do you make such a big celebration of Christmas Day? Who was really born on that day? Wasn't he only a man? A man named Jesus? A human being just like us? Why have you created such a fantasy about him? Who is this man? Why did he come? When they exhausted their list, I responded, Now I will answer you. 
But let me begin by telling you a story. Once on a very cold winter day, a man noticed a small bird outside his window. He realized that the bird wanted to come in and warm itself. But the window was closed. The man wanted to help the bird, so he opened the window to let it come in. But the poor bird was terrified and frightened and flew away. The man felt sorry for the bird and wished that he could become a bird so he could speak to the frightened creature and invite it into his home to get warm. The Jewish people are just like that poor bird, I told my listeners. Our forefathers were afraid of what they could not see. Therefore, they did not want to do what the Lord expected of them. But God loved them very much and did not want them to fly off or be on their own and lost forever. And so in His great mercy, He sent His Son to give us, to, in, to give us in the form of a man, the God who seeks us and pursues us. His Son spoke with us in our own language, telling us what God was really like and how much God loved us. Then He suffered and died for us in our place so that we could be reconciled to God. Because of this, we can be happy in the Lord. We can sing and praise His holy name, especially around this time of year when we commemorate His coming from heaven to earth. These people listened very intently and seemed interested. But when I had finished, one of them said, that was a nice story, but it is only for Christians. There is nothing written in our Jewish Bible about Jesus. I replied, I told you that you would receive a surprise when I answered your questions. And now I will show you that surprise. I will show you from the Jewish scriptures one of the songs sung by Christians at this time of year to welcome our Lord and Savior. And we sing it in the Hebrew language. I then opened my Bible and read Zechariah 9, verse 9. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, thy king cometh unto thee. He is just and having salvation. I then continue. We do not sing this on Christmas Day just to keep alive a fantasy about a mere man. Jesus came from heaven to earth because mankind had sunk deep into sin and there was no way for them to be saved. It was necessary for God to send him, his only begotten son, in the form of a man, so that mankind could get a clear picture of God and so that we could speak with him face to face as a loving father speaks to his children. On the Day of Atonement, we pray, wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. Psalm 51, verse 2. When the Lord Jesus came to earth and gave himself for us, it was to cleanse us from our everlasting sin. At the beginning of our conversation, we asked why Christians are so happy at Christmas. Now I ask you, why should we not be happy? The Lord has come. He has saved us by shedding His blood. If we accept His sacrifice on our behalf, we can be sure of spending eternity in heaven with Him. Once again, my listeners said, this is only a Christian story found in, a Christ in Christian books. It is not for the Jews. I countered by saying, the stories that you hear from the rabbis are so old that they should have long beards by now. But they are only stories, fabled stories, handed down from generation to generation. I want to hear something new from you. But even more than that, I want to hear something that is based on the true and living Word of God and not on the stories you have received through the centuries from false teachers. Please examine the Scriptures for yourselves and open your minds and hearts to their teaching. Draw your own conclusions and do not rely on what the rabbis tell you. If you do this, then I will be glad to speak with you again. I promise, <coughs> excuse me, I praise, I praise the Lord that they were open to my proposal. And one of the men said, we are serious about this. Tell us the importance of the coming of the Messiah. I was thrilled at this response and said, if you are truly interested, you can read about the coming of the Messiah in your own Jewish Bible. Such passages, passages as Micah 5, verse 2, Isaiah 7, 14, chapter 9, verses 6 through 7, and the entire 53rd chapter of Isaiah will give you a clear picture of His coming and who He is. If you have the time, 
I would be glad to read these passages and discuss them with you. And I can show you many other passages pertaining to the Messiah. I was delighted that they were willing to read the scriptures with me. And when we had finished, I asked, Now do you understand why I'm so happy in Him? Do you realize what a joy it is to glorify His holy name and sing His praises to Him? Or do we need more proof? Is the Bible not enough? Do you think the stories of the rabbis are true and more relevant to the Messiah than what we have read here from the Holy Scriptures? Oh no, they said, the Bible is the only book. If that is so, what are you waiting for, I asked. Why not believe in your hearts for all that we have read? And then you too can share in the joy of this season when we celebrate the coming of the Lord to the earth for the Jewish people and for all other people of the world. Wouldn't you like to be happy about the birth of Messiah? They all agreed that they were glad that I explained the significance of Christmas and they promised to think carefully about all that I had told them and to read the scripture passages again. There are many people in the world and each one has the privilege of being saved if he or she will come to the Lord according to the way he has ordained in his word. Because of this, each person has the right to hear the good news of the incarnation of the Lord Jesus Christ and of his death and resurrection which accomplished the forgiveness of sin, the salvation of the soul, and the assurance of eternity in heaven with Him forever, who yields His or her life to the Savior. We cannot save people, but we can be guides and point others to the One who is the light of the world. The light shines in the darkness. And the darkness does not overcome it. An angel went from God to a town called Nazareth to a woman whose name is Mary. The angel said to Rejoice, O oh highly favored, for God is with you. You shall bear a child, and his name shall be Jesus, the chosen one of God.
Let us bless our God. 